Okay, we're uh, welcome to the Gateway API meeting for uh, 25th of March, 2024. Um, as always, this is a uh, Kubernetes meeting, so we're bound by the uh, usual code of conduct, which sums up to be nice to each other. Um, the we have a couple of um, couple of small uh, items on our agenda today, although we expect this to be a lighter session because it's post KubeCon and lots of folks are away or otherwise recovering. Um, so uh, we've got two things on the agenda currently. Well, three. Thanks, Grant. Um, uh, let's, so we'll hit them in order. Uh, someone asked, uh, should we have, uh, is April 8th and our new target date for release 1.1? Uh, for the moment, yes. Um, it's just going to depend on, uh, you know, how quickly, um, how quickly, the maintainers uh, sort of recover from KubeCon. Uh, I'm mostly back at work today, but I'm still recovering. Uh, jet lag is a real thing. Um, so, but yes, that is the plan that we will get 1.1 out soon. So yeah, um, please, uh, oh, sorry, hang on. Let me, I just re realized I'm, I have not shared my screen. Oops. Um, so yeah. Please uh, make sure that if you have things that uh, we uh, we talked about being in 1.1 down here, um, <clears throat> we've got a few things left to do for some stuff. Uh, conformance profiles are on track. Uh, GRPC route is on track. Uh, we need uh, we need some uh, conformance reports for the parent ref port um, conformance tests once they are in, uh, and we should be able to do those. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, for the others, uh, client server validation, we need to finish some stuff. Uh, session persistence, we're about to talk about, and uh, gateway merging, we are still waiting on that PR to merge. So I will do some reviews uh, today or tomorrow. Um, and if there's any other questions or anything else, if you want those things pushed ahead, then please uh, yeah, poke in the uh, poke in the channel or uh, poke me or one of the maintainers on Slack. Okay. Uh, any questions or anything else anyone wants to say there before we move on? Dave. Uh, I, I just have some conformance tests for like some core and extended features. Um, okay, yep. I think some of them has some actions I have on me, but I think some of them are just... Waiting uh, for review? Yeah, so ideally those could like hopefully go in yep. for one, one. Yeah, okay, cool. That's um, it. <clears throat> Okay, no problem. Sounds good to me. I will I will make sure I check them out. Okay, anything else from anyone? Okay. Um, so uh someone asked any new feedback for Gateway API coming from KubeCon conversations. Um I made it to the uh, Thursday chat. Uh, the 21st, uh, but I haven't, I, I did take some notes, but I haven't written them up and put them in there. Uh, to summarize, um, I'd like where the maintainers, the uh, Robin, uh, Shane and I have talked, um, we are going to look at ways that we can encourage folks to uh, get things into provisional and move on provisional gaps a bit quicker without, uh, and try making it a little bit more, bit more like the, uh, the CNCF sort of, Sandbox to incubation and then incubation to graduation um, transitions where, you know, the bar to get into provisional or sandbox is pretty low. And then the sort of the first big gateway is from, uh, is from, uh, is from provisional to implementable uh, or experimental once there's some implementations. Um, we've got a, I've got a couple of ideas about that that I will write up and pop, pop into the um, notes and we'll talk about it in another thing, but yeah, I'm not quite ready yet for that. Um, we had folks sign up. Uh, I also encouraged folks to, um, start thinking about for issues that you would really like. The first step for a lot of issues is to just do a roundup of the background and the prior art here. Uh, the ones I was thinking of were, uh, cause TCP route, um, and rate limiting for, or, and yeah, the, the last one is of course auth, but that is a really big one. Um, the idea here is to just start a get document that leaves the goals and everything reasonably blank. 
don't need to be 100% in agreement here, but the, what we want is just a tour of the current prior art and a you know, like I did for the uh, timeouts so that we can all get on the same page because it may be easier to get the thing moving once once we have done some checking and sort of and we all have a, a bit more background on what everyone has been doing uh, in this space. Uh, we talked a bit more about some policy stuff um, that I'll fold into the uh, policy PR. Uh, and yeah, we talked about the scope of backend policies. That's another discussion that needs everyone present though. So I'll put some notes in the thing about that later. Uh, so that's all of the stuff that I had. Does anyone else who was at QCon have anything else they want to add here? Sure. Um, I think I'll add that one of the things that we discussed was potential priorities for Gateway API in 1.2. Uh, mm -hmm. We discussed wanting to figure out, I guess we already sort of talked about in the scope of like initial gaps and uh, on background stuff like that. We talked about uh, retries on HTTP root would be great. Oh, yes. yep. And uh, specifically in the context of auth uh, and ext auth z implementation. And we discussed that a few meshes or a few uh, implementations already use something that is either identical to or very similar to Envoy's X off Z. Um, and that could be a really lightweight way to avoid bike shedding on the ideal OAuth or JWT implementation with all of the fields in Gateway API and instead just be able to call out to a service. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that was my highlights. Um, and then the discussion that you missed um, the first day, Nick, uh, we talked a bit about um, policy attachment, <laughs> uh, yep. specifically inherited policy attachment and kind of like what some implementations are doing today um, in that scope. So there's just, we need to get some implementations and you <laughs> in a room at some point and talk about that in more depth <laughs> to make sure that yeah, we're okay. like reconciled what we're proposing with like what people are doing. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, that probably should be done sooner rather than later, I guess, since yep. I would really like to merge that PR before we roll out 1.1. 1 .1. Um, so uh, yeah, for uh, for anyone who is interested in that, please reach out to me and we'll try and schedule a side discussion uh, about that policy attachment thing um, as soon as possible. So yeah, Mike, if you want to um, ping me, um, I, I assume that Guy probably... Uh, one of the same um but yeah if anyone else is interested ping me and we'll and i'll add you to the ping me with an email address that i can send the yes on slack thanks alex um <clears throat> ping me uh young nick on kubernetes slack um and i'll uh see if we can uh tee up a meeting it will probably be a similar time frame to this because this is this is my sort of morning yep uh, that'll work for me Okay, Grant, do you want to uh, take us through the naming discussion? Yeah, sure. So at KubeCon, um, sure some of you guys were there. A uh, guy stood up and said, hey, uh, session persistence, this means something else to me. This means uh, persisting a session and, the, and I guess the backend as far as storage goes, uh, like persisting the state to storage. I think this is a Java developer type of term um, that they use. So I just wanted to do a sort of a poll um, to see what people are thinking. Me and Shane are kind of going back and forth a little bit on it. I did a bit of a survey to see what uh, implementations are calling it. And honestly, it's yep. it's all over the board. It's uh, some folks call it st st sticky sessions. Some people call it session persistence, like we're trying to call it. Some people call it session affinity. Um, so, yeah, I was just curious if anybody had any thoughts. I think Shane is okay uh, with with keeping it as session persistence. Um, the one thing I like is that we're using session persistence for hard uh, session affinity and then session affinity for soft session affinity. So, like, the hard and soft. And there is a bit of symmetry between the two terms, which I kind of like, having, yeah. you know, session something and a session something else. And... Persistence sounds stronger to me. I think I looked up like the, 
the term the definition and it was like a guarantee like of something with a connotation of guaranteeing where affinity is more of a like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah but and uh great really great work on uh this uh this uh comment here man that's amazing um yeah i i'm tended to um i, I i'm kind of tempted to keep session persistence mainly because we already argued about this a lot but um yeah i mean let's, let's uh, i'd like to sort of also hear from uh stefan about this uh and sort of with this thing and say you know hey is it really that big a deal like i i, I have never been a java developer so i don't know um is you know uh so it would nice be nice to hear um from other folks as well Uh, any other thoughts, Grant? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, I think at a minimum, I'll, I'll go in the gap and I'll do some, uh, I'll add some. Uh, I mean, I think, I think you should, yeah, yeah, I think you should put the, put basically almost exactly what you put for this, this comment in. Uh, like you certainly should put this table and this graph and this uh, graphic in, in the, uh, in the gap for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Uh, that, that I think exactly putting pretty much what I have here would be helpful. Yeah. Um, the other comment I had was I, I was reading Istio's documentation and, on this destination rule, and I realized that they call, uh, they they they're using cookies with soft what they call soft session affinity, which means, um, it sounds like it doesn't exactly encode the back end uh the back ends like identifier directly. But it hashes on a cookie, uh, which I didn't realize. I think that's slightly different, but um, that might be something I need to clarify in the gap because it sounds like you can use cookies for session affinity or like a soft session affinity just by, I guess, just hashing on cookies. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dave? Yeah, for what it's worth, like Spring Framework, which is a Java framework, also used a session persistence in order to store a session state in some store aka like a database right. or whatever so honestly i think persistence is the wrong word meaning for the gateway project um to use because yeah it's you're not really persisting any session details in theory so uh, two cents there yeah okay okay um yeah well that uh puts us back in Figuring out names for things land. Um, yay. Uh but yeah, okay. Well, if it is if it is very strongly coded that way, uh, for Java stuff, and, and you do make a good point. Um, I mean, I I have I have uh, I was fine with using persistence because the session uh the session's path persists in the same, you know, in the it uses the same path. And so the path persists persistently lives rather than a new path being determined uh, every time um and that's thus persistence um so yeah i guess it's just where you're thinking about um what the persistence where the persistence lives but the fact that there's this level that you know that there's that level of confusion says we need a different name um i mean conceivably we could also call it strong session affinity and weak session affinity uh, but that also kind of sucks um so let's so yeah, Grant, uh, if you could uh, update the gap with with that table, um, I think, um, I mean, we can fix the naming later, but like definitely you, we can fix the naming of that top, at the top of the table later. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need that. That table is great because it um, really makes a bit clearer what we're, uh, yeah. One of the reasons why this has taken a long time is that people, again, uh, use the same word to mean different things. Yeah, I think, you know, and honestly, it's, yeah, we need to figure it out. But I think if we need to swap, you know, session persistence with sticky sessions, it's not the end of the world. It's just a, yep. it's a said replacement in the gap and, you know, it's not the end of the world. But I think what's really important is as long as we're all on the same page, we're having the two different ideas of strong and soft. Yep. Um, I think that's important because that would fundamentally change a lot of things because that's decoupling the APIs. That's that's having two different ideas. Um, yep. 
and it seems like everyone likes that uh you, you know strong being uh encoding the backend id in a cookie or a header where soft is be using um you know like client ip or uh, any hashing details i guess just hashing on the uh, the the 424524 whatever it is and consistently yeah. trying to send it to the backends so I think I need to ex expand on that a little bit because there might be some details I'm missing about the soft side of things. But yeah. um, as long as we're good there, I, I think it's not that big of a deal. Yep. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely in agreement that it's good to split those two things. Um, so yes, I think, uh, and I think having the, I mean, maybe in the naming discussion, just call it strong. Yeah, I mean, I think in both cases, it's still an affinity. It's just how strong the affinity is. Uh, and so calling it strong session affinity and weak session affinity to start with while we think about other names for it is probably better. It feels better to me anyway. What do you think? Yeah, that's it's more verbose, I think. It is more verbose, yeah. yeah. Which um, I, I, I don't, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it, it, it's at least, it at least makes in the, you know, naming... You know, naming discussion section of the gap, you know, so saying, hey, we've got two ideas here, which one's one's stronger and one's weaker. Let's talk about them in terms of strong and weak uh, and then come up with a name sort of at the end of the section or something. Um, that feels like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. Um, you, I guess, uh, as always, useful feedback leads to good discussions. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll kind of... I'll, I'll update the gap and uh, please, if anybody has opinions, I've, I've got uh, Dave's noted, um, but if anybody has any strong opinions, please feel free to post. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, that is the last item on our agenda. Does anyone else have anything? Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, M Michael asked in the chat, Grant, uh, is there a session in weak session affinity? I mean, well, I have a thought here, but Grant, you want to go? Uh, yeah, I would. I would say it, it's still a session uh, for the duration of that. It's uh, persisting. It's just that means it persists uh, in a weaker state. It, it is more likely to to break. Is that what you're thinking, Nick? Yeah, yeah. So I think actually that's another good reason why we called it session persistence to start with is that the session affinity is of necessity bound to the uh that running that runtime of the proxy and it's only, and it can only be local. Um because your um when you hit that proxy, the uh you know you're you're calculating it on the five tuple or network properties of the um thing. So it's a it is still a session in that that proxy set knows, hey. You know, everything that matters this five tuple needs to go to this same backend, but it doesn't persist across restarts of the proxy or the um or the connection showing up at another proxy, which in the case of that's why we called it session persistence because the session will persist across across instances of the proxy, um you know because the backend value is encoded in a de uh, deterministic way into the cookie or into the header or whatever into some method so that. You don't need um, on the proxy side. You don't need um, like session synchronization between proxies for every proxy to make the same routing decision. Uh, I think if you have the same list of backend endpoints and if you do like hashing, should or should the result be the same, even though there is no like? Well, uh, maybe it depends on the hashing algorithm you use and how the yeah, but like. And, but also there's no guarantee that when you start up, like it, de it depends on exactly how the thing works. If you're doing some sort of, uh, you know, ring hashing algorithm, then you, know, it depends on where the pointer for, if your ring is like this, right. And your one proxy that all the proxies have the same ring, but the pointer for each proxy could be in a different spot, depending on how many connections they've had come in. Right. Like it, it, it it's very implementation depend, dependent then based on how, um, exactly how you're implementing like picking when you make a new one so um 
like if you're doing it based on say if you're hashing all of the back ends and giving them some hash and, and if you have a single list that's fine but then most of the time when you do this sort of thing you're not going to use a list you're going to use like a ring buffer or something some other sort of circular construct so that you know you're effective that's how you do a round robin right like and may and a lot of the time when you're doing a weighted round robin the weight just means you put more entries into the ring um and so you know, then you just pick the next one or randomly pick one or something like that but if you're, you if there's any random randomness at all then the back end choice is no longer deterministic and so you know so that's why it's important that there would be session synchronization between proxy instances does that make sense yep thanks thanks yeah so yeah that that i mean that's one of the things that distinguishes weak from strong session affinity is it's all about the uh, what happens inside the proxy and how it determines where the things are. Thanks for everybody for helping me recover context on this. It's been a little while since I thought about it. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up too, Michael. It, it, it uh, I, I realized I don't think I talk about um, like the the idea of like a transferring from one proxy to the other or a proxy restarting. Yeah. Uh, that's that's probably a really good point. I need to bring up in the gap to help further defined hard from or strong from weak yeah so yeah i get that i'll, I'll take care of that awesome thanks grant uh, okay so now we're really at the end of our agenda does anyone else have anything uh, if not we will call it call it a half hour meeting today and be back next week Cool. Later. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, let's uh, talk again next week. Cheers.